Hey everybody, welcome back to the ST3D video. Like always, I'm BJ. Today we're gonna to be working on something very special. We're gonna do maintenance on the Creality CR10. Just like most mechanical things out there, including your car and things around your house, eventually over time during uh, wear and tear, uh, there's parts and things that need to be maintained to make sure that you get the optimal performance out of your machine. And today, that is what we're going to be doing. Over a period of prints, maybe 50 or 60 prints, there's parts that get loose or belts that need to be tightened or things along those lines. And today, I'm going to discuss a few of those with you. So, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and lubricate our Z-axis rod. The reason we're going to do this is guys because the Z-axis rod is the only thing that actually holds weight as it's going up. So it's actually putting a lot of strain on that one rod that you have on this particular printer. So what we're going to do is first we need to get all the old grease off of it. And to do that you can just get a regular pad and uh, just apply some alcohol solution to it or your second option is to just get some rubbing alcohol pads um, that come in those little packets you can just open those up and just uh, keep going up and down until you satisfy that you got all the grease off another thing you can do uh, which I did is I just had an extra pad laying around and I took my wife's nail polish uh, remover and put that onto the pad and then just rubbed everything down as you can see there's a lot of grease that's coming off of this after you do this um, you want to go ahead and lubricate the z-axis rod <clears throat> and to do this I'm using the non-stick Teflon and I'll explain to you why in a minute but what you want to do guys is once you get this uh, go ahead and shake it up really well because some of the solution does sit at the bottom so once you shake it up you should get a nice creamy uh, liquidy feeling like you know how you would get on your milk so as you can see right there <clears throat> I got a good nice clear uh, white texture to it so just make sure you shake it up really well and once you do that just you don't have to apply a lot just go and uh, take it and just go straight down in one gentle motion all the way down <clears throat> And once you do that, if you if you want, you can do it one more time, but I, I think one is more than enough. Now, once you do that, you're going to have to move your Z-axis up and down. Now, people have G-codes for this out there, guys, but I just did it manually. I just put it all the way to the top and then hit Auto Home and then brought it down. I did this for about three, four times. Now, the reason I like to use the non-stick Teflon is uh, for a few particular reasons. One, it doesn't leave a greasy filament residue behind. Also, it doesn't attract dust like most grease or lubricants do out there on the market today. Um, <clears throat> I used this at, on machinery around my house and I had good luck with it so I just thought I'd try it on here and uh, there's few people out there that actually use it on their printers as well. So once you go ahead and apply this, uh, just make sure you get your Z-axis rod to go up and down at least two or three times. What that's going to do is as a spinning is going to evenly lubricate everything out. Next we're going to work on tightening or tensioning our belts. Over a period of time guys as, as you're printing it goes back and forth back and forth and eventually it becomes loose. And also <clears throat> in my case here if you see there's a slight discoloration on my belt. The reason for that is because it actually is rubbing against the gear back here. If you notice uh, we have the motor and my belt is a little bit to the left and I'm trying to push it to the right before I had it pushed a little to the right and then I pushed it to the left so uh, that's something we're gonna work on as well so the first thing you want to do is once you have um, figured out which axis you want to do first we're gonna go ahead and start with the y-axis here and also notice there's a little discoloration in the back as well so my belt is rubbing all the way through as it's going so the first thing you want to do is get the uh, screws loosened up so there's two on one side and there's two on the other side guys so let's go and work on those and get those all right so once you have these screws loosened up uh, what you want to do is put a little bit of tension you can use a screwdriver whatever you want 
uh, you can pry it so it comes out or you can just go ahead and pull it out until you feel like it's ready and then go and tighten one side a bolt on each side and then uh, let it go and then tighten everything else but for what I'm doing I'm actually gonna push it in because I want this belt loose because I got an issue in the back alright so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna go ahead and move the belt over a little bit back here so it's not constantly rubbing on that or rubbing on this side so I want it kinda right in the center like so and then we'll go back to the front and go and tie once I do that I'm just gonna go and pull this out I got a little bit of space now and I'm just gonna pull this until I get this sound right there then I'll just go ahead and tighten it back up all right so there we go it's gonna go and tighten this screw on this side and then just tighten one screw on this side just sniff to where it stays still got that noise right there and then I'll just go ahead and tighten all these other screws So as you can see, I got a little bit of space right there. Nothing too crazy, but it should work pretty well. So if you notice here, I kind of have the same issue. I got a little bit more gap on this side where it's favoring a little towards there. Eventually it's gonna rub on that and cause an issue. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. I'm gonna go and loosen that up, or sorry, loosen these two up so the belt gets loose and then I'll tighten it on the other side. So let me show you on the other side exactly what I'm talking about. So if you notice it favors a little bit on I guess the back side and the front has a little bit more gap so once I move that over it, sh it should help there's no problem to be fixed but over over period of time it does do that. Now once you loosen the screws this thing is basically just going to pop right off. Now we're not going to do anything to this. Um, but I'm just going to put this back on, pop that in there and I've already adjusted the other side and I'll show you that in a minute. But on this part it's really important guys is not to have it up. You want this belt low like you see on the other side which is right over here as you see, see I can't even touch it but here. I can't. So what you want to do is make sure this thing is straight when you pull it out and as you tighten it this part should come out a little bit more. So I'm just going to give it a few uh, turns just to make it a little tight. Just the belt a little. Pull it out. Now keep in mind when you're turning this, this thing's gonna go down. You wanna make sure you keep it straight and parallel with what you have here and just keep an eye on the belt to make sure it's not touching the bottom.
All right. Belt feels pretty tight, snug. And if you notice on this side, I got a little bit more even space on both sides. So there you go guys, so belt two, all done. Now after you've checked both belts, what you want to do is you want to check these little wheels at the bottom. Like here, and then I took two of them off, so I only have four, but mo the standard comes with six. So what you want to do is you want to check for debris and things like that. If you notice the one in the back, you can actually see a few things on it. So I'm going to clear that out and uh, what this does is just make sure there's no debris there to kind of cause any kind of a problem later down the line. Now me personally what I do is I just use a aerosol can with the nozzle on it and I just point and shoot. That usually works for me and it gets rid of most of the stuff that you see there. Just do be careful because I know you don't want it to freeze like it did right there. So, because what that does is eventually, I mean eventually it defrosts, but it's just good not to do that lubrication purposes. So on this side, I've already done it. Most of it looks pretty good, except for right up there. And there it is. And that's all I do right there. And then I just get in the middle where the uh, belts go. Don't spend too much time on it, just really quick. All right. Now after I've checked the belts and cleaned the wheels out and everything like that, what I want to do is go and make sure all these bolts everywhere are tight. Even on your fan, because that's what, believe it or not guys, that's what causes most of your rattling. That you're hearing that annoying vibration noise. I'll just check everything, make sure everything's good to go. And um, once you're done with that, the next step, or the next thing you want to do is... You want to make sure these screws right here are tight. So all I do is I just stick an Allen key in there. Let me turn it to an angle. Okay, and then just hand tighten it. Make sure everything's good to go. Once you go over the first screw, check the second one. And once you do the x-axis, you do the same thing to the y. And then you do this same thing to the Z couplers, which are at the at the bottom. So let's go ahead and move on to the Y. All right, so here's the Y right here, and we're just gonna do the same thing. Now this is probably very important to do, to guys, because if this is loose, then you're gonna have a lot of issues. So there's two right there. So we got that done. Now we'll move on to the Z. Now the Z is right here. Just keep in mind on the Z, you're probably going to have a few obstacles because most of the wiring is right there. So on this one, you just manually turn it. Just be careful with it. And that should be it. I believe there's only two there. So now this is very important to do this because the Z actually has a, is the only axis that actually holds weight and was working against gravity. So when it goes up and down, it actually has all that weight that has to work with so that's why it's kind of important to tighten all these up and to lube your Z rod. There you go guys these are some of the few steps you can do to make sure your printer is running nice and smooth because I don't know about you guys but I rather do maintenance than do repairs on my printer. Alright guys that brings us to the end of our video if you liked it give it a thumbs up if you didn't thumbs down but explain to me why you didn't like it. Also, if you have any questions, comments, leave it down below. And if you want to see new content, subscribe to the channel. And like always, good luck and happy printing.